Hello my bunnies, it's Tiki's Trinkets here and today I have for y'all another Paula McClay tutorial. We're finally getting back to some tutorials. Yay, thankfully. And this one was a request. I'm going to put their channel name right here. Okay, that's long enough. <laughs> and they're a long time subscriber now and they request quite a few tutorials but I still feel free. I, st I still like to give them a shout out or anyone who requests a tutorial I'd always give them a shout out if I remember if not I usually put it in the description box below but if you ever ask me to make something and I forget to give you a shout out just let me know and I'll include it one way or another I'll either put it in the description or the comments or something like that anyways what they asked me to make was a chipmunk I decided since it's getting closer and closer to Christmas I would make a Christmas chipmunk and he came out so stinking cute. I, the only thing I have to complain about is the chipmunk's nose is longer than that. I wish I would have just made his face just a little more pointed. It looked more pointed before I added these chubby wubby chunky cheeks, but I had to have the pat cheeks. They just, that's just how a chipmunk looks. Just, it's so cute. The little whoo, mouth and the chubby cheeks just really makes this guy. And then to make it a little more Christmassy, I had a few of these buttons or cabochons, whatever you like to call it. I get them from Joann's, Michael's, or Hobby Lobby, or any craft store near you. Should have near the sewing section or some kind of button section with flat back buttons. Or buttons with little prongs on that you can cut off. That's easy too. And also to add a little more Christmas flair, I painted the base to kind of look like a Christmas ornament. I did lines on the base too, but after I glued them, you kind of can't see the lines, so I kind of felt like it was pointless, but it still looks cute. Like I said, really happy with how it comes out, especially with the fur texturing. I love, love doing fur texturing. It just makes something, any kind of animal look so much more realistic. And I do clay for the fur texturing back there too and on the face, but you could always use paint. I just prefer clay because more clay feels more authentic, more real to me. Also, I can texture the clay. It's really hard to see, but you'll see it in the video. I just kind of take my X-Acto blade and you just kind of stab at it. It took me about 25 minutes just to do the texturing, maybe 30 minutes. That just goes to show you how long that little guy took. And again, I'm really happy with how it came out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial as well. For a next week's video, I think about maybe doing a poll, if I can figure out how to do a poll. I want to know, there's two videos I didn't get to do that I wanted to do. Well, I do have a request first. I should probably make the request first. So, I guess I'll do a request and then I'll do a poll for next week, next, next week's video. Unless I get high on the bandwagon of Christmas. I might just wait for 2020 to roll around to start doing polls for requests. Because I know a lot of other YouTubers do it and I like it too, so we'll see. Either way, I've been blabbering for three minutes, so I think that's long enough for me talking. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Let's get in there. Bye-bye, my bunnies. For this tutorial, you're going to need white, tan, black, and also a very light pink color, which I forgot to include here. And then, like I said at the beginning, I just used the little bead to make it a little more Christmassy. But you can do whatever you want for decoration. First, we're going to start with the tan, and we're going to pre-roll all the balls that we need. You can pause it right here if you need to. We're going to start with the biggest ball. <clears throat> Sorry, allergies. Really scratchy in the throat right now. And we're going to go ahead and roll this into a very long, fat teardrop shape. Then after you do that, you're going to cut the tip off so it's flat on the top. Then to make the bottom match, pick it up and press it gently against the wider side of the base. Next, to kind of make it look hunched over like how a chipmunk looks, just take your exacto blade or your finger and then dent about right in the center of the torso. And it should look something like this. I'm also going to show you a side view so you can kind of see how it curves, like so. Then what you want to do is take a tool or your finger and just kind of blend it so it'll look more smooth and not so rough. It came out looking like this, so now it's nice and smooth and natural looking, like natural little tum-tums and stomachs and stuff. Next we're going to go on to the head, so we're going to use the second largest ball. And you're going to want to roll this into an egg-like shape. Just roll it in your palm or in your fingers to get the shape. 
then press your finger about halfway to the top so it'll make it kind of look like this shape with the snoot. The little nose is a little more stuck out. Then to make it stick out even more, I rolled it between my fingers just like this. And then by the end of it, it looked just like this. Again, it stuck out more originally, but once I put the cheeks on, it doesn't look that stuck out. But, you know, just kind of compensate for that by rolling it a little more narrow or a little more pointed. Next, I'm going to use these two tiny balls up at the top. These are going to be the cheeks I was talking about. Put this on the face, and just very carefully and slowly blend it to the face. This probably took longer than it did to do the fur texture, so probably 30-40 minutes. Next, we're going to go on to these two balls at the bottom. We're going to make his feet next. And I always do a standard kind of foot for most mammals. So I roll them in the tubby, chubby teardrop shapes. <laughs> then using my fingers, I kind of press down the back or a rolling pin to press down the back. Then using some kind of cutting tool, indent the tootsies. Two lines on both feet for toes. And then I went on ahead and stuck them on the body where I think they would naturally be placed. Voila, perfect. Next, we're going to go on to these two balls down here at the bottom, the ones that I'm pointing at right here. And you're going to take them, and with the palm of your hand, press them down on your work surface, just like I am here, so it'll be round on the top, but flat on the bottom. Then once you get done, they should look a little something like this. One was a little bigger than the other, so I did go back and resize that off camera. And once that was done, I just stuck them onto the thighs and pressed them down on the feet so everything would stick together easy. Next, we're going to make the arms of the little ham. I keep wanting to say hamster because it looks like a hamster. Of the chipmunk. You're going to roll these into teardrop shapes. They're a little over an inch long, but you're going to cut a lot of that off, so that's fine. I just tried to make them long and skinny. Then press the tops so that the tops will be kind of flat. And it should look something like this. And then just like you did with the toes, indent two little lines on both hands so that they have little paws. Again, I do, oh, and cut off the top at an angle. I do the same thing for most mammals. Next, I went on ahead and stuck it where I want the arms to be placed and where I want the ornament to be at. And then I removed the ornament and went on to the tail. So we're going to use this piece right here, and you're going to roll it into a teardrop shape, like so. And then to make it fit under the body, you're going to kind of cut it, but don't cut it straight down, kind of cut it at an angle, just like I did here. Then I took my X-Acto blade and did texturing by just doing small and long lines by just cutting it into the clay. Next, we're going to go on to these two last balls. These are going to be his ears. Roll them into very long, narrow teardrop shapes. And then, just like you did with the arm tips, you're going to cut these at an angle, just like this. And then taking your dotting tool of some kind, indent two little holes into the tops of the ears and stick them on the head. Next, we're going to move on to the white color clay. Again, I always use Sculpey 3 because I just like the texture, but you can use whatever you like. And I pre-rolled all the balls that I needed just for this as well. We're going to start with the two at the top, and we're going to do the same thing over and over for the next few steps. You're going to roll them out in the really skinny lines like this. And then you're going to gently press them down to kind of mimic the fur pattern of a chipmunk. So start at the nose and bring it around the eyes. And then cut off the excess. And we're going to do this over and over. For the bottom of the eyes, we're going to use the next two small balls right here at the top. And roll them out exactly the same. Like so. And then you're also going to place these under the eyes and cut off the excess just like we did with the top. I know the picture looks blurry, but I did the same exact thing. Next, for the next piece, is going to be a little bit different. This one, you're just going to roll this ball right here. You're going to roll into kind of like, I don't know how to call it, this shape. <laughs> There's no word for this. And then you're just going to flatten this out. It's nice and flat for your exacto blade. And if it's a little bit too big, don't worry, you can cut off the excess once it's on the body. And then starting at the top, press it on and kind of roll it into the body, cut it off before you blend it into the body, obviously, cut off the excess, then blend it into the body. Last but not least, for the white color clay, we're going to go on to the last two balls I had up there. You're going to roll them into very long strips as well. And then you're going to place it on the back. 
they kind of mimic the chipmunk pattern. Again, don't worry if the clay smears, it just looks more like fur, more realistic. Next, we're going to move on to the black, and you're going to roll out four balls for this. Try to make them all about the same size, and you're going to do the same thing you did with the white clay. And you're going to roll them on in the very narrow strips, like that. Actually, a little more narrow than that, because you want them really thin. And then just lay them to line the white strips on the back of his back. It doesn't have to go down the tail, because you don't really see it on the tail much, but at least on the back. Next, we're going to go into that pink I forgot. All I did was cut out a tiny little ball and use my fingers to shape it into a triangle shape. Very easy. And then just put it on the nose. Well, put the nose on the face. <laughs> Next, I poked a little hole for his mouth and drew a little line for his little lip indentation thing. Then once that was done, I cleaned it with alcohol because it was very dirty. And now, here's the fun part. Where I took my X-Acto blade and took about 30 something minutes to texture the life out of it. Once I got done dough, it looked like this and it was well worth it. Or you can leave it untextured, but I I went more realistic for this. Next I took out the eyes and then we were ready to bake. While that's baking, I got out my acrylic paints and a wooden base to go ahead and paint it to make it all Christmassy and festive. I just painted the base red waited for that to dry, and then busted out the green with a dotting tool, even though this picture is extremely blurry, I don't know why, <laughs> and then I just kind of made a Christmassy pattern. Like I said, I did a line, but he gets covered up by the butt, so it doesn't really matter. Once it's out of the oven and everything's dry and cooled down, I went on ahead and glued in the eyes and glued on the charm, and then glued him to the base. Perfect. And then once that's all completely dry, give it a good 10 to 30 minutes at least. I got my polycrylic floor varnish, which I get from Walmart, and I glazed it with at least two coats of glaze, which I always do. And then once that's done, you're finished. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye, my bunnies.